Good morning. Ooh, thanks. My name is Bjork. Oh, that's your Bjork impression? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I am confused. <laughs> what kind of Bjork impression I is that? I don't know. It's an early morning one. She's more like a kind of a pixie. She talks like that. That was yours, was the same as <laughs> mine. Hello, my name is Bjork. Where are you? New input. She's like a little pixie robot yeah. from Iceland. That's like Bjork. That's very insulting to all the people of Iceland who have their own distinctive accent. You can't really do uh, accents per se these days, can you? They are of a piece racist. Uh, you reckon? Yeah. It's all racist. It's all racist. That's why when they remake Wallander, mm -hmm. the famous European detective show with Kenneth Branagh, what, what country is he from? What are you talking about? Holland. Wallander. Come on, it's the new sensation. Wallander from Hollander? Yeah, I don't think he's from Holland. He's from Switzerland or something. Swaziland? No, yeah. uh, somewhere in Europe. <laughs> he's the new uh, Dr. Morse, Inspector Morse. And he does a good accent, does he? No, the whole series is set abroad in somewhere like Switzerland or Wait, Holland. But, uh, but think... they all talk in English. Right, exactly. Yeah. But he's, uh, and he's playing a, a Swiss man. Yeah. In, with Swiss friends. And he's not Swiss. I think I'm wrong about Swiss. It's somewhere around that general area. I didn't watch it all. <laughs> good facts. We got, thanks, man, thanks, we're, thanks. We're off to a good start. We're straight in there, armed with all the facts. But they just talk English. Right. Uh, which seems weird. That's the way to go sometimes with accents. Do you think? I think so, yeah. You just locate it, you know, I mean, Tom Cruise, he's not going German in, uh, Valkyrie, is he? Isn't he? No. Not even a little accent? Not even a little. You see, that's gonna confuse me. I want Germans to speak like this! Well, so do I! I agree with you, absolutely! <laughs> you know, funnily enough, I've got some clips to play you a little bit later on, which pertains exactly really? to this. Really? They yeah. can't just come in and go, hello, mate, I'm German. I know, I? but the German accent like this, that is considered quite racist. Well, this is my initial point at the beginning of this very rambly link. Mm. Well, you're right about the <laughs> rambly link and also about the racism of the accent. Accents are now racist. They cannot be done anymore. No, you are racist now. You are racist. You are more racist than me. Look at Let's you in your tight dance. trousers. Ooh, we shall dance while this next song plays, The Stone Roses Waterfall. She's a waterfall. Yes, she is a waterfall. That's inconvenient, though, isn't it? Don't go chasing her. I mean, um, she's just going to leave a trail of dampness and destruction everywhere she goes, isn't she? Yes. That's very bad. Sorry. I wouldn't invite her around. Hey, listen, we've uh, forgotten the basics so far in our links to say good morning, listeners. We're Adam and Joe. I'm Joe. I'm Adam. Uh, and welcome to BBC Six Music on a Saturday morning, if you've just tuned in. Quite a miserable Saturday morning. It could be the end of the world. Certainly in southern England, there are flood warnings all over the place. Uh, you're advised if you're in bed at the moment, just stay there. Just absolutely stay oh, there. I wish I could have stayed there. Credit crunch Christmas, you don't need to buy any presents. We've established that. Mm. Not even to support the economy. Find other ways of supporting the economy. Get yourself a hot toddy or a hot dobby. If you've got a Dobby to hand. <laughs> Bad Dobby, naughty Dobby. <laughs> Move over there, Dobby. My thighs are cold. And batten down the hatches. Mm -hmm. Batter down the hatches. Baton. Baton. Yeah. You see, that's another egg, possible egg corn for me. Oh, really? Batter down the hatches, you said? Yeah, pour batter down the hatches. <laughs> I thought it was a medieval war method. Right. Pour some batter down them hatches. Oh, I've got batter on over yeah. me! Oh, my God! That's a joke for the under sevens. <laughs> That's a good joke. Thanks, mate. I'm under seven. Doing my best. Mentally. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're very happy to be here, folks. Hope you stick with us until 12 o'clock. We have the resolution of song wars coming up mm. in the next hour. We did songs last week about national treasures, figures of absolute love. We, I did, uh, Stephen Fry. Jo I did Joanna Lumley, and we got sent an email during the week saying that there is a website about national treasures where they list these people. Oh yeah. Fry is very much on there. Lumley apparently isn't on there. Hasn't been nominated. Not a lot of interest in Fry. Disgrace. I'm you... not sure she's a disgrace. No, Maybe no, it's a disgrace that. It is a disgrace. <laughs> How dare you call her a disgrace? <laughs> I wouldn't wait in there calling her a disgrace. What's your problem? She's lovely. I she agree lovely. with you. Maybe people think, you know, uh, they're confusing her with her part in Absolutely Fabulous. Right. And thinks she's a sort of uh, disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> Your song about her was unironically, um, you know, affectionate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I decided to just be fairly straightforward about it. And I think a lot of our listeners, though, thought that you were taking out of uh, all the Michael out of it. Really? Yeah. Well, that's a good get out clause, isn't it? Right, right. right. Maybe I was. For life. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But yes, you said, just before I die, after uh, my after final words will be only joking. It was just ironic. <laughs> 
um you said last week though after we played our songs you said oh adam it looks as if you're doing quite well initially but then yep, ben th- yep. sent through some emails during the week our producer ben that did not indicate that i was doing well at all there was people saying joe's song was brilliant adam's was really annoying i was quite upset really annoying i didn't see that one i would have liked to read that it one. was more than one would have given me a midweek pick me up <laughs> it was more than one <laughs> no i mean annoying is the worst thing to be though isn't it well listen we should uh say to the listeners that we are getting because we're getting quite a lot of emails and our emails are beautifully written generally wouldn't you say the people who write into us yeah they're articulate. They're properly structured letters they got full stops maybe we should encourage handwritten letters oh, that's in a good ink idea. pen mm. don't you think mm-hmm. that would be even more elegant and then we could certainly guarantee to read those ones absolutely out, as long as they weren't obscene or yeah. incredibly boring but uh, as a result we do read all the ev- every single email we get that's why we're getting them in uh, uh, during the week sent to our homes because mm. we don't have time to read them during the show uh, and now I've forgotten what I was talking about, so I'm just going to have a little bit of a nap. That's fair enough. Yeah, but the only problem with the whole situation is that I get to read how annoying my song is. Anyway, right. you'll find out for yourself later on when uh, when we announce who the winner of Song Wars is going to be. It should be quite a tight race this week, I would think. And, of course, later on we have Text the Nation and uh, some more great music to play. Is it my free choice now, Ben? This is a little bit of an M.O.R. Uh, smash for you right now. I heard this song first when I was about nine years old and I was on an aeroplane and I was flicking through the, the stations on the aeroplane there the muppets and it's not the muppets no and this is back in the day when on aeroplanes you had um those headphones that were just tubes of plastic like a stethoscope yeah and you would Mm. plug in your tube of plastic and the music was coming out of the actual armrest and if you didn't uh, if you couldn't afford the tubes of plastic you could just lean down and listen through the holes in the armrest i mean that sounds antediluvian doesn't it but it's real it happened and this was one of the songs that really stuck out when i was flicking around the channels on british airways back in the day Bee Gees and how deep is your love a couple of little skips in there that's my old copy of the saturday night fever cd there really it's a little bit scratched up so apologies for that do you enjoy the take that cover of that song no even though it's pretty much identical yeah no not having it why not because it's it's created in the spirit of something yucky and and post you know what i'm saying what it's a sort of unnecessary cash in yeah i mean it matters to me what the spirit of the original recording was and uh, with the Bee Gees, that that was it was proper but what ta- anything that take that are doing is somehow revolting hey them. really yeah yeah I, mean, I would say they are close to becoming national treasures i know it's got to stop i don't think so i like them you do you like them yeah i like them Even did you buy me gary barlow's biography for christmas or yeah, are you yeah. giving something away we, we are, are. Good, yeah that's, that's, yeah that's a little tease for next week teaser for next week's pre-record christmas show <laughs> adam gave me we give each other presents on the christmas show and uh how many in the show altogether six six yeah three yeah. each we get so i've given one of them away but i read it did you yeah and it made me really like him right because they have a proper comeback story now mm-hmm. i mean he really did hit proper lows and he's a good songwriter barlow whether you like what he writes or not he's a, he's a talented individual yeah i find him very sympathetic right and the book really sold him to me you know he was locked in his house smoking jazz cigarettes non-stop very depressed for a year or so tortured by images of williams and yeah of, of robbie williams being horrible to him mm-hmm. And it's somehow comforting for everybody in the world who might feel, you know, uh, they're on a bit of a downward curve, that things can turn around so And massively. you might get some kind of TV special. Exactly. An amazing <laughs> sort of promotional TV special and be in a super duper advert. Yeah. And just be sort of cuddly and, and, and a national treasure. And if you're Mark Owen, get to sing one of, one of your really quite bad songs, almost solo. Really? In, did he? I didn't see that TV did special. Did you not? Did he sing The Green Man? No, I don't know if it was one of his solo ones. I'm not sufficiently familiar with the... That was the... my Mark Owen impression. That's very good. Thank you very much. That's, <laughs> oh, <my God>. That's <laughs> a bit cruel, isn't it? No, but... you know, I mean, I, I, I don't mean to be unnecessarily horrible about Take That, but I mean... It's hard to get excited about the, the music, though, isn't it? Yeah, but it's quite easy to get excited about their... About the personalities. Their, their chummy grins. Well, that's OK. Fair enough. I, I wish them well. And it is nice. It certainly is nice to see them bounce back and have a bit of success. And to after. see Will- Williams with his tail between his legs yeah. coming back and, 
you know, wanting to be in the band again. Does he want to be in the band mm. again? Does he really? Mm. Well, that is an amazing turn up for the books, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, there's hope for everybody. After the arrogant years. Yeah. Well, there you go. Okay, it's time for an exciting Christmas trail now, listeners. Check this out. Darlene Love with Marshmallow World. Again, a revolting and impractical way of looking at uh, the world. It would just be appalling and sticky. You could toast it over a hot fire, though. That would be nice. You could toast it. Yeah, you could toast You could just take a flamethrower to the couch. Maybe the world is being toasted over a flame, though. <laughs> Thanks, Al Gore. Global warming. <laughs> Thanks very much, Al. <laughs> <laughs> nice point, uh, Joe. <laughs> this is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music, and, uh... You know, there's a little thing. What's it called? The text scroll. Yeah. If you're listening to this show on a digital radio or on a radio with a kind of readout thing, mm. uh, they scroll information about the show in letters, That's like right. a ticker tape panel, so you know what across you're your radio. Uh, and we've been quite taken aback by the bit of text that someone at the BBC has chosen to use to describe this show that apparently rolls across people's radio screens. It says what? What does it say? It says something like music and idiotic chat idiotic chat like what's the deal with that maybe the person that wrote it was being affectionate right and and thought oh well you know i mean we admit ourselves that that our chat i don't there's nothing idiotic about my chat yeah but sometimes we admit that we have shortcomings as djs every now and again but uh you know to have someone else say that is a different thing and then to put it on the text scroll to have the company you work for (laughs) describe you describe it as that it's a little bit insulting we thought our chat was quite good sometimes sometimes you know they what i mean just hired us unknowingly because we're idiots that's they that's all they think of us they may as well just put it's monkey time with two <laughs> monkeys that we monkey hired party. from the zoo two moronic monkeys that we've chosen to uh, we, we've ta- taught them to speak they can't speak that well but they do it for about three hours with music in between so we've changed it this is what we're going to have instead what are we going to have uh, is that well? Our producer Ben has just said that we can we can change it. We're capable of changing yes, it. That's what's coming through now. Really? Who did you change that? No, it's just. Well, apparently it says Doctor Buckles and Doctor Sexy sort you out on a Saturday morning. That just sounds revolting. Yeah, that does sound. Doesn't it? Dirty. <laughs> that's the other extreme. So that's actually what's up there now. So they have so changed they, it. Do they change it every week then? So. Mm. But who changes it? Who's responsible for this? The man in the control room. Well, listen, really? we're going we're to change it. We could even get suggestions from people uh, 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 as to what it should read. Our idea is to change it to fascinating and informed pop cultural overview from attractive geniuses. What do you think about that, listeners? I think that's more accurate. How many words do you think it needs to be, Ben? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sort of, sort of ten words. That's on so. the long side. Certainly. Yeah. If you could, if you listeners could think up the pithiest, you know, if you could think of a three-word description of the show that would just really knock people's socks that off. That is asking for trouble, isn't it? <laughs> it can't be rude. <laughs> no, obviously, it can't be rude or insulting. That's the whole thing we're trying to avoid. No. Now, here's some music uh, to take us up to the news. This is a bit of uh, Bon Iver with Ree Stacks. Bon Iver. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music on a Saturday morning. It's 9.30. It's time for the news. It's time for song wars, the war of the songs, a couple of tunes by a couple of prongs, which will you vote for, which one is the best, we're putting our songs to the listener test, so check it out. Yes, uh, listeners, it's Song Wars time here on the Adam and Joe Show on BBC Six Music. Uh, Last week we recorded and wrote, if you can describe it as writing well my song was actually based on a gary newman tune right two songs we wrote uh, based on national treasures people personalities who the nation should take to their hearts forever yes kind of exactly thing. i did a song about stephen fry in the style of early newmanoid and i did uh, a style uh, a what a song about joanna lumley in the style of uh, a kind of really weedy man <laughs> <laughs> in I think, the convenience style yeah wasn't it? i'm worried that my song stepped over some kind of invisible weediness line right do you know what i mean you should never be afraid to step over the weedy line really no okay and so apparently Ben, our producer, says that it's the closest Song Wars ever. Ever. Two votes in it or something, which means that, like, if any if anything's come through recently, that wouldn't have been counted. Though. Well, four votes have come through right. since the show began. Two for you and two for me. Um... Keeping it level pegging. How many votes, then, are there in the, in the the between the winner and the loser without giving away who has lost or won yet? Just a couple. Literally Just two. a couple. Literally two. Wow. 
you could find out who those people are and publish their names on police websites <laughs> so that vigilantes could uh, get them. Yeah, it's the kind of thing people like to do these days, right? Yes, hanging chads. Honestly, it's all, that's what it's come down to in wow. some wars. We've got it in a BBC w window envelope. That's impressive. That's a new thing. With and the word song visible song through the window. Look at that. Open up Joe's that's opening really the envelope. The sound effect. The winner, of course, will get their song played on national digital radio. Oh, well, there's a surprise. Cornballs takes Cornballs it. Cornballs takes it by. By 2%. 2%. 51% to 49. Well, there's going to be uh, a lot of angry listeners. And and listen, I even got a response, though, from Fry. Wow. Did you get any lumley action? I'm not sure. Shall we get into that after we've heard the song? Okay. Maybe. Let's hear the song and then get into any kind of response we've got. This is La 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 Lumley. For 55 years of my life, I've dreamt about seeing the Northern Lights. She was born in Kashmir in 1946. Her father was a major in the Gurkha Rifles. When she was a little girl, she had a picture book With a drawing of the northern light She wished she'd one day see that sight She applied for RADA, but she did not get in They said she'd never be a model too ugly and a thin But she ignored the scorn they poured, confounded her detractors Five years later, she was Britain's most in-demand model and actress La 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 la, la 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 this is the journey I've always dreamt of making. As Purdy in the new Avengers, she'd kill you with her heel. An alien with psychic powers in sapphire and steel. But in her mind, you could still find her unspoken ambition. To see the northern lights before she died was still her mission. La 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 la, la 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 This is a lifelong ambition. La 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 la. La 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 fully lonely My only dread is that we won't get to see them Through absolutely fabulous two marriages a son And even though it feels as though her life has just begun She journeys over arctic drifts and through the cold and wild And sees the light she's dreamed of seeing since she was a child Something's happening there Look at that Terribly, terribly moving That's La 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 Lumley, um, and in case you weren't listening last week, that is a sort of description of the documentary she made when she went to see the Northern Lights, which was a childhood dream of hers. So no Lumley response that you got there? As far as I know, no Lumley response, right? She's probably off filming. She's filming. She is off filming, right. Have you attempted to uh, approach her agent? I've been trying to find her. You've been trying to find her. You what physically out and about on a little sort of scooter, scooty, scooty, tooty, <laughs> <laughs> tooting and scooting. Well done. But that's uh, thank you for the two people. Joanna, has anyone seen Joanna Lumley? That's what Ben's been doing this week on his scooter. Uh, on Stephen Fry's Twitter site, Twitter is uh, another social networking site, right? It's a co more like an RSS feed. What's that? It's sort of uh, like a just blog. Yeah, or e even more minimal than a blog. It kind of scroll. It sends you single. It's a bit like the status update on Facebook, mm -hmm. where you type in how you're feeling at that particular moment. Right. But I think, as far as I know, you sort of have it open in a window on your desktop, and all during the day, little messages are coming through from everyone on your network. What a nightmare! I know. Why would Stephen Fry, a man who you would assume would be incredibly busy, want to get involved with that? Because it gives him a sense of connection. Okay. Sense of fellowship. Anyway, here he is on Twitter saying, I have now heard the Adam and Joe song. Thanks to all of you who gleefully pointed me to it. Very charming, silly and sweet. Just like Adam and Joe. Hey! hey. hey. How exciting to get a written message from Stephen Fry, but wouldn't it be more exciting <laughs> if we had a spoken one? Yes, uh, of course what happened was that I forgot to press star and then hash. Uh, this isn't the normal answer phone you seem to have in your office. It's a particular one. And uh, I left a long message and for all I know, it's disappeared and not been saved because I haven't left Star and Hat. So just to reiterate, this is Stephen Fry thanking you very much for your wonderful song, 
which touched me more deeply than I can possibly communicate to you. And I'm, I'm really, I'm never going to be the same person again. Thank you. You, know, you expended luscious and extraordinary talent on me, and I, I don't feel in the least bit worthy. Um, Joanna Lumley, on the other hand, was very, very worthy. But on the other hand, she didn't have the extraordinary extra compliment of being played by um, a Gareth Newman impersonator. So that was really something. I'm very, very touched. Uh, thank you. And I'm sorry if the line isn't very good. I'm in, I'm in New York City and uh, we're a long way away. All the very best and happy Christmas to you and everybody. And now I must remember not to put the phone down. Let's start and hash and see what happens. What will happen? Let's have a look. Hey. hey, that's like a little bit from his podgrams. Wow, that's amazing! That's Thank you very cool. much, Stephen Fry. I didn't know that. When did that come through? Uh, during the when did that come through, Ben? Last night. Good one. That's pretty good, isn't it? Uh, it's nice to be described as a Gareth Newman impersonator. Gareth Newman, I know. <laughs> I think Stephen <laughs> thinks that's what you do professionally. Yeah, you're a professional Gareth Newman impersonator <laughs> who's been brought in to write that song. You know, that's fair enough. I it can is live fair with enough. that. Thank you very much, Stephen, and thanks to everyone who voted for Song Wars this week. Uh, we are on a bit of a Song Wars sabbatical over the Christmas period. But yeah, but we'll we'll be back in the new year with Song Wars early in the new year, and I think we need to do something really stupid. You reckon? Yeah, <laughs> even more stupid. A, a really, well, just stupid. Okay. Really silly and idiotic and stupid in terms of choosing a theme. Uh -huh. So please help us. If you can think of an idea uh, for a theme for Song Wars, email us adamandjoe.6music at bbc.co.uk. Every single suggestion will be read and carefully considered. Uh, yeah, so what should we sing about for the first Song Wars of 2009? If you can provide us with a musical style and also the ideally you would give us a kind of um, raison d'etre for the lyrics, you know, beyond the theme, wouldn't you say? It's always helpful. The more rules, the better. The easier it can be, the better. Exactly. Uh, let's have some music now, some real music. And this is um, De La Soul. And, uh, is it? Or is it my free play? No, I think it's De La... Oh, sorry, sorry. Was it going to be Joe's? It's exciting, isn't it? We're so disorganised. Yeah, pixies. <laughs> it's the Pixies, not even. Uh, and this is Debaser. Oh, that doesn't get any any worse, that song. It's amazing. Just gets better. The Pixies with Debaser. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. I'm still fluttering with pleasure from hearing Stephen Fry talk all fruity about us. It was wonderful. From New York. Woo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. Uh, anyway... Now, Joe, did you see the Comedy Awards last weekend by any chance? You know what? I missed most of them, but I saw the very end. I saw a slightly cack-handed tribute to Jeffrey um, Perkins. Perkins, yeah, where they misintroduced his son. And there was a bit of a tonal clash, considering how sad and brilliant that guy was. It was a slightly uncomfortable shift in the sort of six-form common room food fight atmosphere of that yeah. show. Yeah, yeah. And what should have been a slightly more serious tribute, I thought. Yeah. Uh, apart from that, I, I didn't. I didn't watch it. He's had more serious tributes paid to him elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah. But um, but I find the. I mean, we've been to it a couple of times as Jonathan Ross's guest. We've never been there, invited or anywhere near a nomination. As as you'll know uh, if you listen to our podcast, <laughs> where we ranted about it <laughs> a bit, we were complaining. But um, a it's a word. weird atmosphere in there. It's not dissimilar to the NME Awards. It's a sort of award ceremony where it's perceived as so uncool to sort of be nominated for it or care about it. Right. It'd be, be so uncool to, for, the, for the award to actually mean anything that the whole thing has at its centre has a sort of atmosphere of cynicism and uh, carelessness that sort of negates the event, well, weirdly. It, yeah, it strips away all the pretensions of comedians, basically, who would like to think that they don't care about things like awards and regularly take the mick out of that kind of thing. Right. And then suddenly they'd be nominated and they're like, hooray! <laughs> but then simultaneously exactly. being cynical. Yeah, they're not sure which gear to be in. They want their award cake and eat it, you know. And it bring it brings out. It's interesting because it sometimes shows you the kind of real unvarnished character of some comedians. Well, the, the like, whole there's lots of heckling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the whole atmosphere was completely undermined by one person last week, and I was watching the show, and it was very hard to tell where these. Uh, shouts this were coming This is Kevin from. Bishop, wasn't it? Yes, exactly. The guy Kevin in Bishop Star Stories. was over on, uh, on on a table in the corner, and he'd been nominated, I think, for his own programme, The Kevin Bishop Show on right. Channel 4. And uh, it, the atmosphere was already 
queasy because of Angus Deaton, right? He was taking over from Jonathan, who was unable to do the show this year. And Angus was clearly very nervous, as you would be. Right? It's a big gig for him, and he's only just emerging from the, um, you know, scars of from a scandal. Jail. Yeah, from scandal jail. Mm. And so he was out there, and, uh, I mean, why would you want to do that gig? That is a horrible... Hosting the, that show, unless you're someone like Alan Carr, who probably would do it with aplomb, you know, and just mince his way through it and, and laugh it off. He wouldn't mind. But Deaton clearly had a little bit too much invested in, in, in doing a good job. And he does do a good job. He's you know. a good auto cue reader. Yeah, yeah, he's good. He's good all round. But I don't mean that as an insult. No. He's genuinely a really good auto cue. Absolutely, reader. that's a skill. And he, uh, but he, he looked really like he was about to cry a couple of times. I mean, maybe that's not right. Maybe he was absolutely cool as a cucumber. But to me, perhaps I was projecting my fear watching him, and uh, it, it made for uncomfortable viewing. And then gradually throughout the show, you began to hear these shouts and heckles that uh, reached a crescendo when they played uh, Ricky Gervais's acceptance message. Right. Because Gervais won, did they win for the Extras Christmas special or and something? And he got heckled. And, and they kept the audio from the studio playing underneath while they played the clip. So you could hear this one person that turned out to be Kevin Bishop just screaming abuse at uh, Ricky Gervais and saying boring and other things that I can't repeat on a Saturday morning. Uh, so it really made for a strange atmosphere. And you couldn't tell, like, it took a while before you got a shot of Kevin Bishop, who by the end of the programme, if you switched over to ITV2 for the extra bits, mm. was lobbing things at the stage. I did see that, yeah. And Ian Morris, a good producer who's a friend of ours, very yeah. nice guy, had to, nearly got hit on the head by a, some sort of bottle of... Ian won an award for a show called The Inbetweeners. Yeah, which, which is wrote. a good show. Yeah. But he caught it, didn't he? He brilliantly caught the bottle that was lobbed at his head. A full bottle of uh, fizzy pop, I think, yeah. that, that Bishop lobbed over at him. Him. and he, he did a brilliant catch and it was the best moment of the whole night i think you know the the, the itv2 versions of those award ceremonies are much the better shows yeah. aren't they because they correctly reflect the chaos and sort of madness of what's going on and uh, it's much more unscripted and looser and people misbehave yes and it's usually brilliant car crash telly well sarah cox and rufus hound were presenting their coverage and they were very good actually mm. they had oh, just that's the right a shame. <laughs> well no but they did a good job of making it all seem sort of exciting rufus hound's like a up and coming he's very professional but star, i don't yeah. think that's the business itv2 should be in they should get some chaotic, hopeless presenters to do it, like early say, Russell us. Brand type thing. <laughs> us, yeah, we'd we'd screw it all up for them. I think uh, though they should stop showing award ceremonies. Full stop. You reckon on main channels? Yeah, stick them all on the ITV two. Gonna rip the backbone out of the whole best. TV industry. Does anyone watch them? Of course, everyone watches award ceremonies. Do they? I sure. don't know if they do anymore. Well, X Factor is kind of like a big extended award ceremony. That's in a way, different, is it? Yes, it is. Are you voting for the Ewok tonight? <laughs> uh, little Jimmy Sweet Boy. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do Are tonight. Gonna, I'm going to send him back to Endor, if there's anything I can do about it. It's your free choice now, Joe. Yeah, this is Beck, and it's um, a kind of re-recording of... Is it called Strange Invitation? Yeah, from... Uh, what album's that from, then? Uh, well, it's a lyric in Jackass, isn't it? In Mutations, yeah. Yeah, is it Mutations or is it Odelay? Uh, Odel oh, I can't remember. I think it might be Jackass. Odelay, but this is a sort of orchestral, yeah, right. mellow version of that song, and the strings are by his dad. Do you know about Beck's dad? Mr. Hansen. Yeah, do you know about Al him? Hansen? Yeah, kind of. Is that, Al, is that Beck's dad, Al Hansen? I'm, I'm not, not sure. sure it is. <laughs> but he's, uh, he's an orchestral arranger and composer, I think, and he's provided these strings for this version of Strange Invitation. And it's very nice. Very nice. That's uh, Beck with Strange Invitation. Um, and just to correct our factoidal mistakes, his, uh, Beck's grandfather is Al Hansen, and his father's a Canadian musician called David Campbell. There you go. So there you go. Very interesting. This is Adam and Joe. <laughs> I, I didn't mean to uh, giggle there. I just sort of said very interesting in a matter of fact way and didn't really mean it. I mean, it is sort of interesting, but I'd say very interesting. It's interesting in so much as now people won't you know, be misinformed. Well, exactly. It's nice. What I meant to say is nice anyway and move <laughs> on like that. But I said very interesting and then I thought I can't get away with very interesting. I mean, that's pushing it. It's quite interesting. Now you've just made a mess of the whole now thing. I've, now I've ruined it by concentrating on it. Uh, it's time for the top of our sweeper, but it's not the top of the hour yet, Ben. I mean, we've got another one got minute... Another one minute and 20, 40 seconds. 40 seconds to go. We've we got nothing prepared. We can't fill for a minute and 40 seconds. can't suddenly show us that. I mean, it's not as if we're professional or anything. Should we play the top of the hour sweeper early? Is that what you're saying? I think we'd better. Okay, here we go. This is the voice of the big British castle. 
It is the top of the hour. Ooh, that's wonderful. I got so bored with the last hour. I'm glad it's gone. Now here's the new one. It's exciting and it's new. How do you do? I mean, that holds up well, doesn't it? Yes. Is it just because this is music from our era and we're determined to think that it does hold I up I don't well. think so. I'm still convinced that the Human League are a historically important band and I remember seeing them on one of those uh, clip shows where they were treated as a sort of weird one-hit wonder phenomena. Right. And I think that's disrespectful. I think they're... they're phenomenon. A, a phenomenon. Is that what... Did I say it wrong? They are a, they are a single phenomenon. Oh, I, I see. Okay. Not many phenomena. Although there, are, there were you are. three phenomena within the band <laughs> the ladies wish i'd never said it and now. so do i i'm sorry i shouldn't have corrected I'm you sorry. i'm so I'm sorry. sorry i shouldn't have i say you. this is uh, about the correction a, <laughs> i'm so sorry I'm getting a flash forward to the buxton christmas <laughs> in about 2028 when you're 60. <laughs> this is my i'm so sorry <laughs> with me. oh i'm terribly sorry when you're a problem granddad <laughs> do you know we were on the radio first for three years <laughs> do we have to have grandpa out of the round <laughs> look i've got all the podcasts come on everyone let's play them this is the one where joe and myself had to write a song i wrote one about stephen fry can you imagine that <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> Grandpa Adams made us smell again. Sorry, sorry for the smell, <laughs> for the stinky. Where's my sherry? Where's my sherry? It's probably just a, a glimpse into a week's time. <laughs> exactly. Current my, Buxton Christmas. That's my dad. So listen, it's troubling accent time. Um, and this week, it fe our, our troubling accent, I'm saying it as if we do it every week. We pretty much do, almost. But uh, as you know, we enjoy finding really awful attempts at foreign accents by actors in films. And this was suggested by a listener whose email I've promptly lost, so I don't know what they're called. Nice Let's job, call them Joel. John X. Johnny X. Johnny X. Uh, they emailed in suggesting Josh Hartnett's performance in a film called Blow Dry. Sounds uh, fruity. I haven't seen Blow Dry. It's not fruity. It's about a competitive hairdressing. Uh. And it was a big flopperoony, rightly so, because it's uh, confused. It's not the one with Craig, what's his name in it? No, that's a different one, I think. This one has got Alan Rickman uh -huh. and Josh Hairnett. Right. And Hairnet has been in the news, of course, this week because he successfully sued a British tabloid for lying about some sex romps he had in a hotel. Oh. He's made 20 knicker off of it. Nice. And the newspaper's defence was, yeah, sorry, we made it up. <laughs> they just completely made it up. Um, so he's a little bit richer, but I'm going to make him a little bit poorer by playing this attempt at a Yorkshire accent. And, of course, he's from America, Middle America somewhere, Josh Hartnett. You know who, who Josh Hartnett is. He was in Pearl Harbor. He's so handsome, he can only just open his eyes. Yeah. Uh, he's blinded by his own reflection. He's like a kind of mid-80s male model type person. Yeah, but quite a good actor, I think. Is he? What's his best role? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, uh, put you on the spot with uh, Hartnett there. Uh, the faculty he's in, isn't he? Oh, what he's else good is in the in? faculty. Mm, That's good yeah. enough, man. I'm, I'll take the faculty. Oh, and I think he's quite good in Halloween H2O, weirdly. Yeah. I quite like that film. It's an underrated film. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. All right, But it's then. fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he's supposed to be quite good in Rain Man. He's on stage in London oh, in Rain yes. Man at That's the moment. Right. I think it might have come off. But anyway, in this film, he's pretending to be from Yorkshire. And this is his Yorkshire accent. Here's the first clip. And he's passed it. I don't care what folks say. So he's got some trophies, one of few things. They go back to the bloody Ice Age, them do mate. Back to when the bloody Yeti were wandering Ice Street looking for a shampoo and set. What? <laughs> Look for a bloody Yeti, man. Look for a shampoo and set. <laughs> well, at least in that one, it's possible to understand what he's saying, right? Barely. Have a go at this one. All new world now, mate. More like sculptures, modern styling. Tell you, if Henry Moore were born now, he wouldn't piss around with marble and statues and stuff. He'd be an addresser. Oh, my goodness. That's actually quite comprehensible as well, I think. Or maybe In it's just because I've listened to it a lot. Henry Moore? That's the only bit I understood from that one, mate. I mean, how... And presumably it doesn't get that much better. He, is he the main character in the film? Mm, one of them. Why would you cast... A man from... Because the... that's how you get your money to make your film. Is it? Probably would have been no film without Hairnet. A glimpse into the film industry there. Yeah, there are enough people in the world who will just rent something or have a look at it on Hairnet's name alone. Stand up, my wife. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the, you know, that's one of the main reasons why films are rubbish. That's true, isn't it? Because of finance-led casting. That's a shame. I mean, the director must have been standing there digging pencils into his thighs while he was... Doing that well, scene. I guess they hope that the majority of Americans, where most of their box office earnings would come from, can't tell. Right. 
they don't have the ear to to tell got you but how about this one i think this is clip number three if this is the right one i think this is my favorite right better get your shift on there eh? gotta get him back to rights before morning give us an idea fix him up and then we'll do all the bar there. Fix him up and then we'll do it. Like do it again. One more. Right. Better get your shift on there. Eh? Gotta get him back to rides before morning. Give us an idea. Fix him up and then we'll do all about. <laughs> <laughs> Fix him up and then we'll do all about. Hey man, after the show, do you want to go do all about? <laughs> yeah, I'd love to. Uh, first of all, and then go do all about. I haven't done what about that. Yet, <laughs> that is good. Hey, listen, if anyone out there's got more suggestions for uh, wonky accents that we can play on the show, we can make it into a feature. We used to do it uh, on uh, on the other radio station that we worked for, but we could do a little jingle here, and it could be a thing, right? It could indeed be a thing, and I apologise to the person who suggested that, that, that I lost their email. Johnny X. Johnny X, that I've forgotten his or her name. No disrespect, Mr X. Nah, man. But uh, we'd appreciate other suggestions uh, about wonky accents. And uh, what are you pointing out there, Ben? Is it a bit of Jasmine Sullivan right now? Ooh. Bust your windows. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. It doesn't matter. Text. That's the short textination jingle. Though. It's good to have variety, though, isn't it? Yeah, certainly. You never can tell how long the hell of the jingle's going to last. <laughs> it's good to have variety, like Live at the Apollo. Right, that's got a new that's not so much every a couple of minutes. It's not really variety, though, is it? Is that Live at the British Apollo? I don't know. The Live at the Apollo is just comedians. But right. there's, another, there's another variety show that they've got now. There's an American Live at the Apollo, isn't there? Anyway, this is going off message. Sorry about that, listeners. I liked it. Yeah. I had a whole combo there. Is there? We'll talk about yeah, it later. No, let's never talk about it ever again. Fair enough. It's Text the Nation time here on the Adam and Joe radio show on BBC Six Music. The text number is 64046. All you've got to do is listen to the following conversation and uh, text in about it. There you go. It's a good feature, eh? What do you reckon? I like it. So, this week on Text the Nation, we are talking about phone disasters, right? Mm. And by that, I don't mean times that you have tripped over the cord of your old-fashioned phone and it's fallen on top of your head. Disaster. That would be a disaster. No, I'm talking about times when you have become involved with conversations or left accidental messages, that kind of thing, that have gotten you into all kinds of hot water. Trubs in pubs. Trubs in pubs. Uh, so, here's an example. This was told to me by a, a friend of mine. A couple of friends, they were on holiday, right, with uh, uh, one with another couple. Brilliant. Is that it? So, yeah. What There's do you reckon? more. That's, it's a good story, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So, this uh, one, so these two couples, they're on holiday. This is true. And, um... At one point, they were they were going to another part of the island, right? And they were driving in separate cars. And so uh, this bloke phones up the other guy, and he sort of says, "Oh, you know, Tom, where are we? Where are we meeting later on?" And um, is that the real name, Tom? No, it's not the real name. Uh, accents and names have been changed. Uh, his real accent was like his his, his real yo, name. Yo, Ricky. Was, yeah, we got me out. Yeah, yeah, Ricky. What's up, my boy? No, he, I'm I'm disguising. Hello, that Tom. Because that sounds completely like that was his name, and that is how he spoke. Hello, Tom Bola. No, it's not. I Tom promise Bola. you, it's not. Otherwise, yeah, I'd, I'd get in trouble. Tommy Knockers. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Stephen King. This is Tommy Knockers. <laughs> Tom Bola. Um, it's uh, it's Julian Rifflesworth, and uh, we're supposed to be meeting later on. No, and so he leaves a message, right? And then, uh, after he leaves the message, he starts having a little bitching session with his wife oh. about the wife of the other guy. Ooh. Just sort of saying, like, what's Marge doing? I mean, gosh, she's being annoying today, isn't she? Yeah, why doesn't she shut up? Why can't we just, like, make a decision and stick to it, honestly? Marge. Marge, just make that one up. She plucks <laughs> it out of thin air. Tom and Marge. Tom, I love them all. <laughs> Tom and Marge. This is true. You're undermining the trueness of the, tr of the story. So, obviously, listeners, you know where this is going. He hadn't hung up properly <gasps> after leaving the message, and the rest of his bitching session was recorded on the answering machine oh, of God. the other guy. Uh, so they, they arrive at their destination, and Tom realised as soon as he'd done it, right, he sort of looked at his phone a, a, a couple of minutes later, realised that it was still recording, it hadn't hung up, and he's like, are oh, you joking? So he hangs up mortified dreading the moment that he arrives at the destination where they're they're all going to be reunited so so he arrives there and d gingerly does a little bit of questioning he realizes that the guy hasn't listened to his me uh, message yet so he's con seriously considering just saying to the guy uh 
Could you just not listen to the message that I he's just He's considering left? saying that or saying it. Well, he's considering saying it when the guy picks up his phone and starts collecting his messages. <gasps> starts listening to his messages. So the bloke is watching him listen to the message preceded by the bitching session about his wife. Luckily, they were sufficiently good friends in this case for it not to be a cataclysmic falling out. And the other guy had to admit that his wife actually was being quite annoying. But it was pretty awkward and embarrassing. One of those things that happens on holiday. They were sufficiently good friends that they that they got over it and it wasn't the end of the holiday. But it made me think like, um, I mean, that was that was lucky in that case. But I'm interested in people who've had more disastrous similar incidents with phones answering machines that kind of thing who've got themselves into terrible trouble i nearly got myself into terrible trouble once really this is uh, a long time ago and it involves a little bit of uh, low quality name dropping I, I may have told you this story before but um do you remember when we we met gail porter i think <gasps> uh, way back at the south park party when right. that, that was the south park the movie this was years ago like 10 years ago and it was around the time when gail had just had her bare bottom projected on the side of uh, big ben if you remember that for fhm magazine i think anyway uh she was a charming young woman and we met her at this party and uh we got on very well actually she's really nice gail haven't seen her for ages anyway um my uh, uh basically we, we we were having quite a flirty time i don't mind telling you right and I went home and I told my wife all about it because I was actually m my, she was my then girlfriend, now my mm. wife. Am I making this confusing mm, enough? Mm, mm. And uh, so I said, I met Gail Porter at this party. She's really nice. And my wife got quite jealous, my girlfriend, as she was then, got quite jealous, uh, which I enjoyed. Yeah. And then um, a few weeks later, uh, I got a phone call. And I hear, uh, hi, Adam, it's Gail here. How are you doing? I'm like, oh, hi, Gail. How are you? And I was really thrilled, right? So to be called by Gail, you know, we'd exchange numbers. And, um, and I was like, yeah, yeah. Oh, great to see you. How have you been? And I was really overexcited, clearly on the phone. My, it was my girlfriend doing a Gail Porter impression. No. And she was only joking. No. But I fell for it because it was She's quite brilliant. a good impression. Wow. <laughs> she, ex she was like teasing me that I would be phoned by Gail at home. Uh, but it was, but I completely fell for it. And I was so mortified when I realized that I'd been so badly busted and there was no way that I could excuse how enthusiastic and excited I was that I just hung up. <laughs> <laughs> Did you live with her at the time? No. No, we weren't living together at that point. Things took a little That's bit. That's a good of a, tactic. Hang up. I just immediately hung yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> Thinking I time. Didn't think of anything to say. Can this be, can this be. This, can this textination be broadened to all communication problems? You know, like if you send a really ill-advised email. Well, we could do that, yeah. I mean, we're sort of, uh, we could save that one for another day. <laughs> <laughs> really make that a different segment. <laughs> no, let's, yeah, yeah let's because broaden these it. Because these people's stories might be a little long for, t for a text. Sure, okay. So feel free to email as well, adamandjoe.6music at bbc.co.uk if you've got any stories of uh, dropping yourself in it on the phone or having phone embarrassments or disasters. And the, the text number, if you feel you can be pithy enough, is 64046. Right now, here's a bit of music, uh, the welcome return of Travis. This is Song to Self. This isn't Travis at all. We're going to play that a bit later. This is Talking Heads, and this is my free play. Uh, a lovely song from more songs about buildings and food. This is The Good Thing. Talking Heads with The Good Thing. That is a wicked song. That was my little free play there. Hope you enjoyed that, listeners. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music on a Saturday morning. Yeah, we were talking last week, listeners, uh, I don't know, know if any of you remember, about egg corns. Oh, yeah. Now, describe, uh, describe what an egg corn is, Adam. Well, uh, a good example of an egg corn... Well, an egg corn is, is so called because the word acorn uh, is sometimes misheard. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. Your answer's too long. I'm going to do corn. it. Okay. It's a misheard phrase. There you go. Yeah, something you've misheard and missay. So some people have emailed in with some quite good ones. Earlier I was saying batter down the hatches yes. was one of mine but it, it's batten down the hatches baton yes so you put you put a baton through some hoops in order to secure your hatch yeah is you that right you find like a majorette you nick her baton and you use it to secure the hatches stick it in your hoops yeah <laughs> well, it sounds filthy there you go um so here's a couple of emails we've had uh this is from phil watson uh he says a few years ago I was diagnosed with cancer, mm -hmm. but I'm totally okay now. One of the many tests was a scan. Before the scan, I had to drink a barium meal. 
Mm -hmm. That evening, I overheard my wife on the phone telling people how I was getting on and that I'd had to have a Bavarian meal. <laughs> <laughs> I let her continue the mistake for ages before correcting her. It really cheered me up, and it's still the only thing I'm allowed to ridicule my wife with in public. The Bavarian meal is so they can trace the progress around your exactly. bloodstream, isn't it? Exactly. Uh, here's another one from Nick Sidney, who says, I wanted to share my new favourite egg corn with you. Recently on a phone into to Gary Crowley, a listener told Gary that a guitar solo on a Small Faces song was, oh, that's an icon classic. That's icon <laughs> classic. <laughs> that's a good one. It's absolutely icon classic. That is good. And then here's another one from Emma Goodrum. And, uh, blah, 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 I also have an egg corn for you. Until my honeymoon three months ago, I thought that, quote, the whole kit and caboodle was actually the whole kit and caboodle. I used to think that as well. Yeah, yeah. it would be nicer if it was a kit and caboodle. I need, you know, because you can imagine how comfy a kit and caboodle would be. Yeah, be I used soft. to imagine a kitten, uh, says Emma, tangled in a ball of wool that's right for some reason caboodle became wool in my head <laughs> <laughs> i exactly know what you're talking about yeah i think that's absolutely right a kitten caboodle would be a lovely thing i'd just like to see it on a on a card we'd very much like to hear any other egg corns you've got uh do do send them in to us on the email please and what's the text number as well for people six four zero four six is it that's from memory after a year and a half that's, that's you know, not bad is that's it? not bad four and five numbers i still can't remember the either the text number or the email the te the the email's easy because the dot comes where you think the at would be so when you want to say at just say dot adam dot joe no no idiot. that's not an at that's an and come oh, on yeah. try it try adam it. and joe at no you, no! See, you said at <laughs> adam when, you, when and... you feel yourself wanting to say at go dot <laughs> adam and joe dot bbc right and now you feel a little sense of excitement that you've said the dot that's your cue to say the at next adam and joe dot bbc at six music no adam and joe dot bbc <laughs> <laughs> i've forgotten it now what is it Adam and Joe dot six music. It's the station. Right. I so nearly swore then. Because <laughs> I'm so passionate. I so nearly said a bad word. Yeah. What did it start with? It started with an F. The F one. It was the fire right truck one. The F bomb. Yeah. Wow. That would have been very nearly. That would have been curtains for us. <laughs> Try it again. Adam and Joe dot six music at bbc.co.uk yes yes Woo! it's ten thirty. time for the news hold steady there with stay positive who nice are they then to, uh, do you know them? anything about them bellowing yeah man they were big news last year really yeah are they're, they good are they, they are good integrity i think they do have integrity they're, they're sort of old blokes you know they're kind of old are age they? yeah and they um for years had sort of straight jobs and then they decided that they were just going to be in a band they were big musos loved bruce springsteen all that kind of thing so they just got a kind of band together and they rock seriously hard good well that's good info apparently that single's been rescheduled for a december release mm -hmm. that's this month yeah due to the lead guitarist ted kubler mm -hmm. being hospitalized with pancreatitis oh dear that doesn't oh sound dear. good i mean well, they're quite hard to, yeah. hard living hard drinking really? boys yeah so they should take care of themselves maybe they're a little bit old but a lot of their songs are about excessive behavior in one way or another they sound like they're having a good time their gigs are apparently legendarily incendiary <laughs> <laughs> so there you go now uh i've been enjoying a lot of audio books recently right? yeah well we know you can't read yeah, so that true. follows. <laughs> that is true. You know, I can read to myself. I just can like you? To say, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't mean that. Even though, ha when, when you read to yourself, Some, can I make it clear? Sometimes I say things and they're not, you know, completely. You shouldn't take them. At yeah, I know value. what you mean. You mean I can't read properly? Can you? Not really. No, you know, uh, do you read aloud in your head? Like when you're reading a book, do you? Can you hear the words in your head? Oh, uh, yeah, kind that's, of, I guess that's so. That's a sign of a bad reader. Is it? You're not supposed to... <laughs> I've never to, really thought about it. You're not supposed to... I did a speed reading course years ago at school, and it was teaching you how to, like, scan Wasn't the words of a page. Anything. It didn't teach me nothing. But one thing that did stick with me was the guy saying, if you say the words aloud in your head while you're reading, then uh, you are reading much too I slow. Don't. I don't. You don't? No. 
And one of the things about speed reading is that you don't say them aloud. You just scan them with your eyes and you kind of absorb key words here and there and you miss out. Who would want to speed read? Well, exactly. Stupid thing to I do. like to make books come alive in my head, giving the different accents to the different voices, that kind of thing. But this is why you listen to audiobooks. Well, They're brilliant for listening to in the carbles, aren't they? They're great, yeah. I mean, the great thing about audio. When books, I say carbol, I mean car. Not the actual place. Not, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but it's a fun juxtaposition. That wouldn't be so fun, would it? But if, you know, the great thing about an audiobook is that imaginative element is still very much intact, mm. you know? And, and they're lovely when they're read by the author. Yeah. I noticed I was recommending to you the Steve Martin autobiography, Born Standing Up. It's a brilliant little book. And I notice you've got it there on audiobook. Yeah, you recommended that to me, and that's one of the best audiobooks that I have purchased. It's really great. I mean, he's obviously a talented actor, Steve Martin, so he, he does his book, which is very well written as well. He's a good comedian as Total well. Total Justice, and it's amazingly good. It's such a brilliant dissection of the, the comedian's art, and it's very touching, and uh, it's in interesting as well, whether you're a, St a Steve Martin fan or not. I've got Alex James's book, Bit of a Blur, which is enjoyable. He's not such a good reader. Isn't he? Does he lose interest? Well, he's got that sort of slightly drunk way of talking, and he, sometimes he doesn't do his own stuff It's a justice. feat of concentration, and, and breathing's quite difficult when you read for a long period. You can get yourself slightly dizzy and, and sort of mildly hyperventilate. Yeah, and you can hear as well where the sessions have stopped and started. Really? And the, the sound of the mic is slightly different. Really? And he doesn't go very long <laughs> without doesn't. having to have a, a new mic position there. But it's good, man. I recommend that one. And he plunges into the whole business of doing acts for different people so when he's reporting dialogue from other characters in his life in the book he'll just do an accent for them well this is an interesting area isn't it because it's taken as read if you're reading a story to a child you'll bring it to life by doing all the voices and the accents yeah that's and half the fun yeah exactly sometimes it gets confusing remembering which accents you've assigned to which character it's one of the skills of the of the reader yeah but uh, as you get older and the book the subjects of the books you read become more mature do you still do the voices yeah surely do you think so is that the case in most of the audiobooks are people still doing funny voices michael palin in his diaries which i would also recommend they're fascinating the python years in the audiobook there he doesn't he doesn't do any accents as far as i'm aware it's a shame it's a shame but it doesn't you don't miss it because i mean he's such a good reader anyway he makes the whole thing come to life without needing to do the accents and you don't mind because it's like uh it makes it's it's more sort of journalistically right or correct in some way do you know mm. what i mean not to do the accent for some reason well this is like what we we were saying about wallander isn't it yeah but with alex james for example the tone is quite silly and over the top and frivolous anyway so uh, so a, a daft mancunian accent that he he will do for someone doesn't seem that out of place can i just say wallander the swedish detective he's swedish not mm. swiss swedish it's easy to get S switzerland and and sweden mixed up because Sweden. Of the, sw there uh, but i was also listening to uh john sessions reading armageddon by max hastings which is all about the battle for germany 1944 to 45 and that's obviously a more serious book in a lot of ways a historical novel and uh historical not a novel but a uh, a historical account of that period in germany's history and uh you know serious stuff but John Sessions throws himself wholeheartedly from quite an early stage into doing impressions of many of the key players, right? And he's obviously a very gifted impressionist, John Sessions. So it's not a stretch for him. But it's quite a shock when you first start hearing him do it because you don't expect it. Here's an example. This is an, uh, an American accent that he does for, um, I think it's uh, one of the people that's not famous. It's a uh, trooper, some, what's he called? Trooper John Thorpe. This is just a, you know, a bit of reported speech, and, and, and here's Sessions doing the accent. Trooper John Thorpe wrote in his diary, And Jerry gives himself up to us in a cabbage field. The water is running out of his clothes, he's covered in mud, and shaking with cold and fright. So, yeah, he's gone. Is he South African there? No, no, he's from New York. So he, is he now? <laughs> I think he is, yeah. But so, so Sessions, that's like one of these sort of anonymous accents. That's, Trooper John Thorpe is not a famous right. person per se, so he's just going for a generic American accent there. But then other characters are more well-known, and he does not shy away from ascribing the correct accent. For mm. example, here's Churchill. Churchill dissented. He wrote to the Joint Intelligence Committee. 
it is at least as likely that Hitler will be fighting on the 1st of January as it is that he will collapse before then. <laughs> I mean, it it's... turns him into a bit of a car caricature, doesn't it? A little bit, yeah. Is this a serious book, the tone of this? It's very serious. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a bad war, wasn't it? It was. Lots Apparently it was one of the worst. Died and everything. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, and, and, you know, I mean, that's a good Churchill impression. You can't take away from it. Well, it's not very difficult. But it's not hard to do, to do a Churchill impression. And it's not something that you would necessarily do in the middle of a serious book. Now, who was that? <laughs> that was J Johnny Churchill, Churchill's Jimmy friend. Uh, so here's, um, here's another one right now. And this is for uh, Bill Deeds, in fact, the journalist who was also uh, fighting in the Second This is World still War. Sessions doing an impression of Deeds. This is Sessions doing Deeds, yeah. In those days, we knew so little about the Russians, said Major William Deeds of 12th King's Royal Rifle Corps. I mean, Bill... We were much more interested in listening to Vera Lynn on the radio. Bill Deeds was known for for his kind of uh, slurry speech, apparently. So he's those are in, these are informed impressions. Yes, I mean Sessions knows how these people speak, and he's doing a kind of informed. Yes, he does. Pastiche. But he but but again, if it's like a person who isn't so well known, whose accent is not as well known as say Churchill or Bill Deeds or whatever, he still has a go at the accent. The dist is not the distinction that if you want your program to be taken seriously, like Wallander, yeah. you dispense with all accents, right. even though it's a massive suspension of disbelief. Well, if you want your program or your fiction to be taken ser uh, not seriously, like say the uh, the comedy series Allo Allo, mm -hmm. everybody speaks like this. That's right. And like, yeah, so that's the so that's what Sessions has ignored. Has well, that's the mistake he's made. He's isn't somewhere it? in between though, because his accents are good. You know, I mean, he 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 is. Yeah, but I'm saying accents are per se stupid. Right. There right. is not, you know, you can't do an accent and not be slightly stupid. Well, he sort of agrees with you because when it comes to the Germans, mm. he doesn't do an accent. Ah. So what's all that? So like he does accents for the British and the Americans, and why does he not do German accents? Why not the German? So so here he is uh, talking uh, uh, about Sergeant Helmut Gunther, not a well-known person, but just a member of the German army. There, Sergeant Helmut Gunther said, "We were amazed that it took the Allies so long to engage us." We were utterly exhausted, yet not we were given the chance to catch our breath and regroup at Metz. Not even bothering with that one. Bothering. And here's another one, Frau Keuchel, he talks about, uh, just Frau a German Keuchel? lady. Yeah. Frau Keuchel wrote to her husband, It is dreadful to realise that Tommy is coming nearer every hour. Here people are full of fears. She's softer because she's a lady. Exactly. Yes. And she is worried. She's full of fears. So he doesn't, he's not even going there with the, with the accent. That's a shame, don't you think? I was excited about the German accents. It is a bit of a shame, but it does uh, back up my point, don't you think? I don't know. I think there's a way of doing it. I, I, I had a stab and I think I did a very tasteful job really? of it. Uh, here's, uh, here's Helmut Gunther, my way. Sergeant Helmut Gunther said, We were amazed that it took the Allies <laughs> so long to engage us. We were utterly exhausted. Yet we were given the chance to regroup and catch our breath at Mets! <laughs> Why? Why is he so excited he's about Mets? Because he's a bit of a baddie. Is he? I swear. <laughs> <laughs> you know more than session stars about this guy. I do. did a bit of research. He's a bit of a baddie and he was very excited about Mets! <laughs> <laughs> That's a very hit -hot. And this is how I would do Frau Keuchel. Frau Keuchel wrote to her husband, It is dreadful to realise that Tommy is coming nearer every hour. People are full of fears. That's quite moving, though, isn't it? <laughs> well, she sounds less feminine than Sessions. Yeah. She sounds like maybe a, She like was a... a very manly woman. <laughs> was she? She, she was. was an hairy woman. She was... Uh, Frau, Frau Keuchel was famous <laughs> for being an hairy You know, woman. I think it's a shame, though, because... Oh, this might be disrespectful, but it would make the war more exciting if... Uh, less exciting... If, if, if the two sides that are fighting each other both spoke like this... Mm -hmm. It would make it less exciting, don't you think? It's better if one side speaks like this and the other side speaks like this. Like baddies, you mean? Yes, exactly. <laughs> but they think that we're the baddies at the time, of right? Of course, yeah. You've got to have a distinction between the accents in order to make the fight more exciting. It's like wrestling. It's nothing like wrestling. <laughs> That's a terrible thing to say. <laughs> I know. I agree with you. I think there should be more of a. You can like he could have done a a dignified German accent. What would have been wrong with that? He doesn't have to go completely cartoon. What about when they're writing the book? What about writing writing the words phonetically so instead of german if if a german person <laughs> said the word german it would be spelt chairman yeah c h a i r m a n and instead of saying the they say z yes i am the chairman 
<笑> I am from Germany. <笑> would that be good? That would be good. Good. Anyway,、well, we sorted that. That's、out. good, man. Though I do recommend、uh, whether you、uh, enjoy accents or not. Uh, Haste, Max Hastings is Armageddon. It's the Smash. So that's audio book news here on the Adam and Joe radio program. Time now for some more music, and here is、uh, Travis, which we promised you earlier on. This is Song to Self. The Travels with Song to Self is that from their new album? That's right.、Uh, I think their album is called、uh, Ode to Jay Smith, or something、mm. like that.、Uh, very nice to hear them again. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Ode to Jenny Smith. Ode to. Jenny Smith, is it? I think it's just Jay Smith. I'm pretty sure, Ben. Don't want to pull rank on you there, but I've seen the poster in the tubes, and I think it's just Jay. All right. Sorry. Welcome to be corrected if、uh, if I'm wrong. So here's a, a free play chosen by me, and this is、uh, somebody called MC Duke. Do you remember MC Duke, Adam?、Uh, just say no. No. Just say no. 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 Thanks.、Uh, he was a rapper. Is a rapper. Uh, he was around in 1987. I've never heard of MC Duke.、Mm, I don't think many people have. He was quite big in mid 80s hip hop when hip hop was young. Westwood was a big fan.、Ooh. He used to love MC Duke. Believe maxing the black plastic, <laughs> distressing the vital vinyl. <laughs> uh, but MC Duke was the UK high tech breaking and Bobby popping. Bobby Bobby popping. Bobby popping. Hello, my name's Bobby popping. <laughs> the UK. The UK high tech breaking and body popping champion,、uh, and he was kind of movie obsessed. Is the good thing about、oh, yeah. him?、Uh, he was keen on using samples from films. He's not a brilliant rapper、uh-huh. by today's standards. When you hear him rap, you might think it's crap. Yeah,、uh, but you'd be forgiven. But remember, this was 1987, over 20 years ago,、mm. when British rap, especially, was nascent and kind of cringeworthy and slightly awkward. Yes, but he is vindicated by his use of movie samples. He released an album called Return of the Dread Eye,、mm-hmm. which had exactly the poster for Return of the Jedi、ah. on the front. He had another album called Organized Rhyme, nice, which was a brilliant bit of wordplay for '87. Uh, but this is his single called "The Final Conflict," and listen out for samples from Omen Three,、mm-hmm. "The Final Conflict," starring Sam Neill, the least strong of the Omen trilogy, in my opinion, <laughs> and a candidate to be remade. I would like to remake Omen Three. Do you think that would play? I don't remember what the story was even. Oh, he's in the White House, was he? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's got a brilliant、uh, right. self. Uh, shotgun execution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah.、Oh, one of my favourites.、Right. It, it's right. even、um, what's her face? Ruby Wax in it, isn't Ruby Wax playing the secretary who opens the door and triggers the gun? Oh, I think very possibly. I might be remembering that wrongly. That might just be a dream. So it includes a sample from Omen Three. Also, Peter Gabriel's Games Without Frontiers、mm-hmm. and RoboCop. And it ends with a brilliant Highlander sample. So think of those samples to pull you through the difficult bits of rapping. This is MC Duke with the final conflict. He, <laughs> he blew the whole place up. Ed two o nine at the end there was it?、Uh, very possibly from, shooting the guy over the model of from、uh, Robert Cop. Yeah, that's good though, don't you think? That is good. Well, it's not good. No, but it's, it's fair, entertaining. It's yeah. And for '87, that was some seriously good rapping. He was like the MC live. What do you call it when you battle like the battling champion? Battling man. Yeah, at the、champion. end. You know, I found、uh, my books of CD singles during the week.、Mm. I used to buy quite a lot of CD singles, and we put them in. Do you do that at all, organisationally? How do you do your CDs? They're on shelves in alphabetical order, are they? They're not in alphabet. They're there by genre. By genre, yeah, and not、uh, not alphabetically ordered within the genre. No. Do you find it easy to find things that way? Yeah. How many have you got?、Uh, about ten thousand. Right. I don't have so many. But、uh, the CD singles are in those weird books, zip up, filey books. Yeah, and man, it was a real、uh, Trevor trove. Absolutely, Trevor trove of stuff that I haven't listened to for <laughs> ages. And luckily, I found a whole lot of hip hop that is in radio edits,、uh-huh. clean versions. Because as a hip hop fan, I find it difficult to select stuff to play because of all the swearing, swearing, bad language, yes, bad language, and very nasty about ladies. No, the way I do it organisationally is I've got them on shelves, and the ones I like most. I've got at、uh, head height, 
Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's... sort of like a news agent. Exactly. Are the filthier ones on the top shelf? F uh, yeah, the absolute filth is on the top shelf, generally like the dance music that I felt compelled to buy in the right. past and just never listened to. I've got that, like all the Goa trance compilations. What's at foot stuff. level? Foot level is uh, compilations that friends have made for me. And you don't also, like no, I do. Much. I just like crawling. Ah, you like to crawl <laughs> Love to, to your crawl. friends. To Every now and again, yourself. when I fall over, I say, "Oh, look, <laughs> there's that compilation." Also, I've got soundtracks down there. Film soundtracks. That's not very respectful. Sound effects, CDs. Listen, I use these a lot, but it, my soundtracks are at the top. Are they? Yeah, they they tend to gravitate upwards. The classical music and the soundtracks, right? Because they're haughty. <sighs> they're high art. Yeah. My bottom shelf would be CD singles and video games. No, CD singles yeah. I've got on the very top shelf, along with really? the Goa trance, yeah. CD singles. CD singles on My the top shelf. My CD singles are on the top shelf. <laughs> Listen, are we going to do any text the nation that stuff? That wasn't a racist accent, by the way. It was just, uh... I, what, where would it be you've from? You've got to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> from a place where I have a batata <laughs> <day>. CD singles. <laughs> <laughs> that was, excuse me, I heard your shout out. I thought it was very racist to people from a country. <laughs> Where is your country? I don't know, it's called Serbia. <laughs> Serbia now, is it? No, Serbia. Oh, Serbia. Yeah. You're not snowing, you're Serbia. Serbia. We should do some, is that what you were getting at? We should do some text the nation. Let's do some after this next track, Wayne. Ben, our producer, he would, that, he didn't, you didn't find that amusing at all. You just looking <laughs> worried and bored during that. Uh, it's time for some massive attack now, I think, isn't it? Massive attack. With Safe From Harm. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. We're in the midst of Text the Nation. Should we have the jingle, Ben? Text the Nation. Text, text, text. Text the Nation. What if I don't want to? Text the Nation. It doesn't matter. Text. Yes, Text the Nation this week, listeners, is all about terrible disasters you've had when trying to communicate with people on the telling phone. That's right. Uh, when you've been rude or forgotten to hang up or that kind of thing. Correct. Uh, yeah. Have you ever had any butt call problems? Uh, do you mean, s what are they called? Gash calls? Slash calls? You know, slash I, calls? I call them butt calls because if you, uh, like if a person <laughs> has their phone in their back pocket and they accidentally sit down on it and, and it uh, dials somebody's number and then you've got like a direct line through to that person as they just wander yeah, around. Yeah, my mum does that a lot. Right, and because I'm... I a, quite like it. It's live from inside her handbag. It's nice, isn't it? And sometimes you get little snippets of, um... Have you got that in blue? Yes. Um, my son, he's on BBC Six Music. He's a disgrace. I'm so ashamed <laughs> of him. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs> you, think, you think that's what my mummy would say? Yeah. How rude. How very rude. How rude. I've never heard anything salacious on a butt call, though, and I often listen. I sit there and listen for minutes and minutes before hanging up, just hoping that something really? sexy will happen. One time, uh, the most fruity thing I ever heard was someone having an argument with their girlfriend while they Whoa. were looking for a house. Well, listen, you might be preempting stuff that people have sent in. Okay, let's have a listen. In fact, that story might be better than what's been sent in, but it's not, because there's some great <laughs> stuff being sent Brilliant, in. man. You got Thanks, out of that man. really well. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here's one from Clarkie in Liverpool. I phoned my mutually childish friend whilst on my lunch, and without giving him a chance to say hello, I did an impersonation of Ben Kingsley from Sexy Beast, quoting that particularly offensive line. Which are <laughs> particularly offensive There's line? A lot They're there, all offensive. Yeah. This was fo followed by a pregnant pause on the end of the line. He said he would phone me back. He later told me that he was in his car with his wife's parents and my phone call diverted through his speakers for all to hear. <laughs> oh, bad one. Bad one, Clarky. <laughs> that happens. You know, a thing that often happens is when you, when a person obviously assumes they're going to be speaking to someone if you phone their mobile and someone else picks it up. I mean, that happens a fair bit, doesn't it? My dad sometimes, when I phone right. his mobile, at a certain time, like he expects calls from us only at a certain point in the day. And um, sometimes he thinks it's other people and he'll do a funny voice. No, what will he do? Um, he, he'll just suddenly go out completely out of character. You know, because you, you reserve, like sometimes for your family members, you would never do a family, you, you never do a funny voice. Well, that's the way it works in my family. Right. I don't know about yours. But with my family, I'm very formal and I'm very straight. Okay. Uh, like, but with a friend, obviously I'd be crazy and goofy and do funny voices. And so sometimes the boundaries slip a little. And if you get busted by a member of your family doing a funny voice, like I'll phone up my dad, he'll think it's one of his mates or whatever, and he'll be like, Hello, who's that calling? 
<laughs> and I, oh, hi, Daddy, it's me, it's Adam. And he'll be all embarrassed. And he'll be like, oh, uh, hello, Adam. Um, oh, <laughs> that's a bit sad. <laughs> Why does he feel he can't be relaxed and convivial and it's jovial fault. with It's you? his fault. He established the parameters. It's not his fault. It's it's the time that he was raised. Maybe. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, here's another one from Matthew Davey. Hi, Adam and Joe. While having lunch in the canteen where I used to work, my friend and I spent a good 15 minutes assassinating the character of another guy who worked there. As we were getting particularly personal, I noticed he was sat directly behind my friend, about 30 centimetres away, with a group of his friends. My friend was still ranting and I had to try and shut him up using the throat-slashing cut gesture. Bravely, we addressed the situation by leaving immediately without saying anything. <laughs> so <laughs> that's not telephone-based. No. That's just talking yeah. in, in the world. They probably owned telephones, so. <laughs> Hey, and that makes it legitimate. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's good. Thank you, Matt in Bristol. Uh, here is one from Bertel Hogan in Kingston. Brackets, ten points to the one who can pronounce my name correctly. Do you want to have a go? Let's have a look here. Bertel Hogan. Oh, this is easy. That's right. Bertel Haugen. <laughs> Bertel Haugen. Let us know who gets the ten points. Bertel <laughs> yeah. uh, Hello, Adam and Joe. My mum has a tendency to accidentally phone people from her mobile. She was once in the car with my dad, and they were talking about how irresponsible my younger brother is. They were being quite forthright and maybe a little mean. Unbeknownst to her, she'd accidentally phoned the brother and he was listening to the whole conversation on his mobile. So I'm glad that really happens in, in real life, because you see it in films sometimes and it doesn't necessarily ring true. That's alarming. The idea of one's parents discussing one, even when one... Am I saying one too much? No, you're like the Queen. That's good. Even when one is an adult mm -hmm. is disturbing. I mean, I remember as a kid in my bedroom, my parents had the bedroom beneath me, being able to hear them going... <laughs> <laughs> and I would be, oh God, what are they saying? What have I done? Oh, what do they think of me? Do you remember that at yeah, all? Yeah, man. Through so the that's the sort of modern telephone equivalent. <laughs> but <laughs> with the. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing and you're laughing at something you no one understands what you're saying? I don't know. I can't even I'm laughing because I can't even do the floorboard thing because I'm laughing so much. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, just kidding. I bet you that is a conversation they had about my hair. Well it's so bad she likes it's Who's put, who's put like sun <laughs> in the sun? It's streak of peroxide. <laughs> oh, you're gonna have to play some music. I'm a bit helpless. Uh, okay, here's some music then. What is it then? Oh, this is you're a free play. Yeah, man. This is to relax you a little bit. Eight line poem from oh. Hunky Dory. This is one of the most relaxing bits of music ever recorded, I think. A bit of David Bowie for you listeners. That was his intention. He just intended it as a chill out tune to be played in uh, massage parlours and flotation tank. Mm, well, he did a good places. job, man. Enjoy. That's the mighty Coldplay with Lovers in Japan. Hey, this is Adam and Joe here on Six Music. I'm Adam. Uh, my name's Joe. Do you, do you think Six Music should be playing Coldplay? Yeah, why not? Because they're so big, they're so huge, they don't need six music to play them. You think we should be more in the yeah, margin? Yes, I do. Well, you know. It's just my opinion. Horses for just courses. My opinion. Yeah, but horses for courses. Oh, that's true, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's put a different Damn. spin on it now, isn't it? I feel like an idiot. You are a bit of an idiot. Thanks. Horses for courses. Hey, how about some more egg corns? Yeah, come on then. Uh, we've had some sent in. What Can is an egg corn, <laughs> Joe? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's, um, a misheard word or phrase. <laughs> Why is that funny? Okay, more egg corns. Uh, I was once playing, this is from Ray. Ray <coughs> Wake. I was once playing a word game with my now husband Chris on a coach to Switzerland. It involved thinking of words beginning with the letter W within the category of items of clothing. I was completely confused when Chris came up with the item Y-fronts. 
until <laughs> I realised that for 19 years of his life, he had thought the aforementioned item were actually wire fronts. <laughs> so called, he presumed, because of the pieces of wire that held their shape. What? There isn't any wire in wire fronts. <laughs> Maybe very thin wire for wire fronts. Maybe he's got, like, special wire pants. Maybe. Chastity wire, wire fronts. That's good, though. Uh, John <laughs> Rankin, fronts. can we say... Uh, ben, the producer, the word that would be used to describe a female dog that begins with B without getting fired. Please don't. Really? Yeah. I said it earlier on, though. What if I say it in the hip-hop phraseology? Biarch. You can say that. You just said that. Well, we've done it now. Biarch. Be- Go on, then. Okay, because that's, yeah. Okay, this is from John Rankin. My wife has a friend called Lindsay who thought that the prodigy's smack my biatch up was called smack my big chop. <laughs> <laughs> well, it should have been. It should have been. She's right, because the way it was before was a disgrace. All right, so those are the ones I've pre-read before reading out. I'm now going off You're going map. into uncharted territory. <laughs> I'm just going to the ones now that uh, our beautiful assistant, Charlotte, has just labelled egg corn. Okay, here uh, we go. Ahem. Guy Bradshaw. Dear Adam and Joe, not sure if this work's written down. That's not promising. But my friend is always making great gaffes when he's at his most serious. He was once making a serious point in a debate and referred to a... Phone no nominon. A phone nominon. <laughs> phone nominon. A phone no nominon. A phone and nominon. That's a fascinating phone no nominon. <laughs> he was later reading an article out and pronounced peninsula as. No, I can't say that. <laughs> but you can guess that it has the word penis in it. There you go. <clears throat> nice Cheers, G. Bradshaw. Thanks. Just a bit part of the male anatomy. It's yeah. not a big problem. Well, why you can't be ashamed of something that God has given you. Well, exactly. Especially or yeah. who, or whoever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Other deities are available. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant someone else had given you <laughs> one. <laughs> who else, me. Santa? I don't know. I don't know about your private life. <laughs> um, hi, guys. This is from John Cox. A friend and I thought for years that Paul McCartney was singing Zippy's Having a Wonderful Christmas Time. Zippy's ha- Having... Well, that's a different area of eggcorns, isn't it? Misheard song lyrics. Yeah. Is, a bottomless... is there a word for those? There must be. I don't know. Musical eggcorn. Yeah, that is a bottomless pit, isn't it? But oh, here's fun. a good one. This is from an anonymous texter. Uh, can we, if we have an anonymous texter, can we read the phone number out and then listeners who want to know their name can call them? <laughs> <laughs> is that good no. no all right it's been vetoed a former colleague of mine feeling somewhat persecuted at work that day turned to me for support pronouncing i'm being made a space goat <laughs> <laughs> an evocative image an evocative image i think you'll agree a space goat that's, that's very good, good well don't forget that we've got text the nation as well still open if you've got any phone disasters that you've been involved we got with. three more here i'm afraid but we're not really being inundated no some text the nations work better than others you know apparently uh but this is one of the b- good ones <laughs> positive nice little positive yeah, spin thanks, mate put on the end there what now is it free play time oh, i thought you were holding them up in a tempting way no, but no, no let's no. have let's have a little free no we've done my free play we've got aztec camera for you right now listeners enjoy this to take us up to news time this is oblivious roddy frame and aztec camera with oblivious from the past um yeah 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 yeah, yeah. this Very is adam good. and joe on bbc six music by the way i'm just filling with a quick I- identity stab no, it's nice, man. Nicely yeah, done. Thanks. I'm just polishing off my sandwich here. I got an egg Ooh. mayonnaise and bacon sandwich oh, from revolting. the uh, from the calf this morning. It's a calf that I've frequented a couple of times, and each time I've got stuff from this particular calf, I have not enjoyed it. Was it freshly made? <laughs> it was freshly made right in front of my eyes. Really? Which calf was it? I can't tell you, obviously. On uh, Regent Street. Not going to tell you. But it was uh, a calf, and I'm not going to go there anymore, obviously. Right. But but I've got this whole sandwich that I've got here. I'm, not, I'm really not enjoying it. I mean, it's not the worst sandwich in the world, mm. but it's not that nice, but I'm really hungry. So what do I do? Am I going to throw it away? How would how, would you commit yourself to the whole sandwich? Would you, would you just eat it anyway or throw it away and then go for something later on? That's the thing You're saying it's, ab- it's completely on that line where uh, yeah. you don't know whether to I eat could, it or not. I could eat the rest of it, but I'm not going to enjoy it that much. I'd, there's only half an hour of the show left. I wouldn't eat it. Get a bit hungrier and then buy something nice from somewhere nice on the way out. Do you think and really enjoy it. Yeah. And send it to children in need. That's a good idea, man. Yeah, Pudsy, Pudsy loves horrible egg mayonnaise sandwiches. <laughs> gonna send this, gonna stamp. 
best You're going to stamp tape. on it. I'm just going to. No, I mean, yeah, that's a good idea because then it'll <laughs> compact. It'll fit through the letter. Pudsy loves stamped on egg mayonnaise <laughs> sandwiches. <laughs> You're already stamping on it. You're doing it with your fist. Anyway, listen. Uh, as if there's anything more important than that, here is the news. That's a young band from the Midlands. They're called Johnny Shuffle and the Shuffly Men, <laughs> and they're very exciting. They're hotly tipped for 2009. I think they're stupid and bad. And Johnny never get anywhere. Johnny Shuffle is only four foot tall, oh. and he's very wide. He's wider than he is tall. Really? That's why they call him the Shuffling Man. And the rest of the Shuffling Men, uh, until recently, worked in the porn industry. And this is the first album that they've made with their clothes on. And it's very exciting. That was called uh, Brown Sugar from the new album, Here Come the Shuffly Men, which is out next January. <laughs> that's None not, of that's true. That's not it? true. That was Rolling Stones uh, with a bit of Brown Sugar. The title was correct, though, Brown Sugar. Yeah. So, listen, an interesting thing has happened with Text the Nation. What, nothing? <laughs> <laughs> kind of. <laughs> but there were sort of two prongs to our interactivity Double this morning. Prongs. Well, it went kind of egg corn and... Exactly. Yeah. And to be honest, the egg corn thing has... Uh, overtaken the whole calls gone wrong fair thing. enough it happens but here we go here are a couple of calls gone wrong that are fit for reading this is uh, from d in preston i work in a social services call center and i had someone on the phone and then she just disappeared i shouted out to everyone in the office to see if they were having problems with their phones and they weren't i was told i must have pressed a button on my phone and i said i you know i haven't read this before it could just be like a non-story I was told I must have so pressed far. a button on my phone and I said I couldn't have done because I was scratching my bum at the time. At this point, the woman... Hey, that was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> what happens? Why did I get given this what happened? What happened to the at woman? At this point, the woman reappeared as if by magic. Fortunately, she had a good sense of humour and sometimes scratches her own bottom. Come on, that's good. What's the scratching the bottom? Yes, what, let me go, go back through was, that. Don't go back through it. <laughs> well, I don't understand it. What happened? Just move on. All right. D, that was great. <laughs> uh, this is one from Tara. Hi, Adam and Joe. When I was a student studying architecture, <laughs> I had a summer job at a local architecture practice. The architecture. Architecture. I still can't say it. I had a summer job at a local architectural practice. I had to phone up an engineer called Hammy Anderson. Hammy Anderson. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the name Hammy Hamster out of my head, and true to form, phoned up, gave my name, and said, can I speak to Hammy Hamster, please? <laughs> With the whole of the open plan office listening. I never lived it down and still teased about it, even though it was a good 15 years ago. It's not good behaviour for Akutek. <laughs> no, bad for Arcutech. <laughs> I like the fact that 15 years later, that will be a good texanation one day, like things that you're teased about and they're centuries old. Right, right, right. What would yours be, though? Are you still be Architect. Architect. <laughs> <laughs> when you're 60, you'll still be getting people... Uh, here's another one. This is, an e this is starting to mutate into an egg corn one. But you know what? I haven't read it. I, I thought of another egg corn. No holes barred. Yes. Right? Yeah. Uh, going around barring the holes, where, of course, it's no, no holes. No holes, like in a fruit machine. Exactly. Yeah. Here's, here's another good one. Well, someone's pointed out that batten down the hatches is actually batten, B-A-T-T-E-N. Uh -huh. The hatches were covered with canvas, which was fastened in place by strips of wood, i.e. battens, says Keith Jewett. He's corrected us on stuff before, Keith Jewett. Well, I'm good. sure he has. I recognise his name. Maybe he should be our official facts man. That would be nice. Here's a very good uh, one on the subject of eggcorns from Lynn Loudon. She says, uh, I thought I'd let you know about my wee mum who is one of the funniest people I know, but she has no idea why. She sometimes or often gets her words mixed up, e.g. she'd been on holiday and was telling me about the hotel room on her return. Please adopt a slightly higher-pitched, almost but not quite camp, Glaswegian accent. Oh, here it was lovely. It had a swimming pool, a sauna and a kazoozie. Kazoozie. She genuinely thinks Alzheimer's disease is called old-timer's disease. <laughs> Nothing is ever specific, it's pacific. Yeah, that's a normal one with kids these days. Uh, and lastly, she called my lovely man on his 30th birthday and wished him happy Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> that's just slightly addled. Uh, one more quick egg corn. Pacific is a very common one, isn't it? I yeah. know. That's Is that an egg corn? Not it's so much. A, it's idiocy. Bad speaking. <laughs> 
Uh, Dear Adam and Joe, this is from Nancy Burns. A couple of years ago, I went... This is a good one. I went to get some photos developed while on holiday in Slovenia. When the man asked for my name, I said Nancy, because that's my name. When I went back the next day to pick up the photo photos, I found he had written Nazi on the front <laughs> of the pack. I didn't know enough Slovenian Sol- Sol- to explain, so I just said thank you and left. I'm still a bit embarrassed. <laughs> Nazi. That brings everything rather beautifully full circle. <laughs> Here's the music now. This is the Noisettes with Wild Young Hearts. Spend Christmas with Six Music. Spend Christmas with Kings of Leon. Can I just ask, was that the last time you did have a haircut? Um, <laughs> yes, that was the last haircut I had. Uh, actually, my hair is attached to this beanie. When I take it off, I'm going to shave that under here. Bruce Dickinson, Bob Dylan, Lily Allen, Nima, Sean Keith. Merry Christmas, everybody! Dave Pierce, Lauren Laverne, Craig Charles, Elbow. It took us a while to learn. The less is more room, didn't it? Yeah. Stephen Merchant, Don Les, Huey Morgan, Adam and Joe. Oh, you know, architects and they're measuring up. Uh, Architect. got those weird <laughs> architects. Who knew the architects? <laughs> Christmas on Six Music. That's weird, isn't it's it? It's a bit weird to come out of a trail of us. I'm not complaining, Ben. I think it's... Uh, I'm not being personal, No, it's just a it's weird just phenomenon. Weird. Yeah, to come out of a trail of us giggling like a couple of idiots. We got a little reverb on the end of the giggle there as well. It's sort of super cool giggling. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas giggles. Wow. <laughs> That's what you got to look forward to. We should have a... It's it's a kind of meta effect, isn't it, reverb? It, it, it pushes you out of the moment and makes you uh, uh-huh. l- look at it. We should have that function during the show. Well, Moyles has got uh, that kind of Does thing, he? doesn't he? Does he? Like if we say something that we're particularly pleased with. with, 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 with you can, can we do that? Can we add effects on the desk here, Ben? We'll give it a go. I'm not serious. I'm serious. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Come on, Moyles has got to number one doing that kind of thing. Thing, 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 thing. thing. I think it's a fun thing to do, you know. And uh, Mark and Large used to do that as well. I mean, that's a DJ staple is to have fun effects on the on the mixing desk there. And I think we should do that. 2009. That's what you got to look forward. New to. effects. You think more sort of widgets and bing bongs on the show? Yeah. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Funny effects. Like more that. sort of George Lamb style <laughs> features and yeah. Yeah. Woo-hoo. That's a good idea. That'll be popular. <laughs> I think it will. Yeah. Come on. Uh, come on. What now? Uh, w- it's your free planer. Is it? Uh, is it really? So this is uh, the far side, and I was talking earlier about finding all my little uh, CDs, mm. CD singles, and finding some clean versions of hip hop songs. Uh, the far side are very difficult to play. And I often, when I'm choosing my free plays, I listen to a song and think, oh, this is going to sound brilliant. And then about a minute in, they say a dirty toilet word. And I think, oh, you idiots, you've mm. ruined your chances. You see, you've let yourself down. But let this, your parents and down. you know, things are very sensitive at the castle at the moment. There Certainly. must be no dirty, naughty words at all. Right. And in hip hop, there are many words said, and often very quickly and sometimes incomprehensibly. Mm-hmm. So one has to listen to the tracks very thoroughly last night right. when in a slightly. Tired stage. Tired and 2D state. (laughs) And make sure there's no... So I'm pretty sure. (laughs) I'd say I'm 99.9999% sure. I'm I'm 100% sure there are no rude words. Yeah. That he may describe something that's naughty. Right. They're they're giving you insults for your mama. So this could be our last show then. This could be the last show. It does sound as if he's talking about uh, the other person's mama having nipples so long that they drag on the ground. But luckily... You just said that, so if he says it, it's not like... Exactly, and plus he says knuckles. Knuckles. Yeah, and someone having long nipples would be absurd. And sexy. Would they be sexy? Like, really stringy long ones? Like, National Geographic-like ones, yeah. Can we have the song? This is uh, The Far Side of Yo Mama. It's clean! That was all right, wasn't it? That's all right, man. That's The Far Side, uh, from Bizarre Ride to The Far Side, I do believe, with it's, Yo Mama. It's good stuff, man. Well, that's, that's old now, isn't it? Yeah, but they're brilliant to Ten Far years. Side, those first two albums. What's the Lab Cab in California? Yeah, was the other one, wasn't amazing. It? And then, of course, the Fat Lip solo stuff. So amazing. amazing. They did a couple of albums without Fat Lip, Absolute. and I'm not sure they were so good. No, once Fat Lip was out of the no. crew, it wasn't But they were cool. playing in London, actually, the other week with uh, Fat Lip, I think the original lineup. Wicked. I didn't go and see them yeah. oh god you really missed out yeah when fat lip got back with them it was so wicked ruddy hedge ruddy hedge absolutely i got a christmas card my first christmas card this week wow, sir. exciting have you got any yet uh i think i've got a couple of corporate ones and it said on it happy season 
right because it might be insulting to someone of a non Jesus worshipping someone secular. Persuasion. You know, if someone is passionately happy secular season. and they get a card that says Happy Christmas, just the just the seeing the word Ugh. the name Christ don't, don't, dare you don't put that in my face with a robin underneath. How dare you <laughs> You've ruined <laughs> my season with just reminding me about that whole thing in the barn. How dare dare you <laughs> i'm gonna phone them up later on and right complain. i'm taking this card i'm taking it to the person who sent it to me and i'm gonna shove it down their throat <laughs> i'm gonna shove it i'm gonna tear up the pieces of your christmas card i'm gonna make you eat them to teach you a lesson that i don't want to be reminded about him all the time i hate you i hate you <laughs> scrappy do you've offended me i hate you so luckily that didn't happen because they just put happy season <laughs> man that was quite cathartic wasn't it yeah it was and the also shouting. um the other ones you get are happy holidays right what's your favorite just secular holidays. greeting uh enjoyable time <laughs> i would, would put be. on and what would be on the card enjoyable time just um close up of some tinsel no that's no. too specific right uh just maybe blank blank yeah just no a, wa a watch a watch a watch <laughs> <laughs> enjoyable time Make exclamation it, mark right. focus the attention on time itself yeah, yeah, yeah. rather than why it could be that you're celebrating that time yes take it away from that that's a good idea or, or be happy brackets on your own terms when you like mm -hmm. close brackets or what about going <laughs> what about going completely the other way and being mm. very specific right have a good time jesus died for your sins <laughs> yes why are you worshiping christmas <laughs> if you do not believe in jesus i hope you burn in hell yeah that would How be about good that? and what would be on that card somebody burning in hell satan very graphic yeah yeah, yeah. satan with a little robin mm. red breast mm. on but his that's shoulder. not so good is it it's, it's not so cheery it's way provocative yeah but it's not as bad as happy christmas Christ. thanks very much happy season happy season mm. no one's gonna get offended season by of goodwill season, are they? No, you're quite right why would you be offended do you send the christmas cards uh do, oh, yeah do, i missed you? out last year but i will do this year yeah yeah, yeah you I can i don't bother. you can look forward to quite an insipid one from the buxton House. really oh, you usually do nice ones of your kids in funny costumes yeah some people some people don't like kiddie christmas cards <laughs> but uh, it's fun. i like them i like them they're yeah, funny i don't send them do you not know and we hardly receive them when did you stop sending them i didn't even start did you never no not at christmas i feel like i've got a cornball it's christmas a waste card of somewhere. paper your mum and dad are so good about sending us cards. They're very good. Well, you know, they're old school. It's and they get thousands. Yeah. You can hardly move in their house for cards. Absolutely. Ben's holding up a piece of paper saying, say goodbye, which cruelly interrupts that brilliant, uh... Well, that's fair flow. enough. <laughs> fair enough. Now, <laughs> listen, right, listeners, we do have to say goodbye. We also have to remind you that our next couple of shows are pre-recorded. Mm. But they're, they're good, though. But they're Christmas crackers. Next week is our Christmas, our special present-giving show. We get we get drunk during it. But <laughs> I hasten to add that I get I got slightly drunk, because I don't really drink, and no, I had some no. champagne, and it all went wrong. Couple of but I hasten to add we pre-recorded it in an afternoon, even though, even though it'll sound like... Evil Though. i said evil though <laughs> that was my true nature slipping out <laughs> even though i am evil <laughs> uh it was recorded during the afternoon so it's not as uh, terrible as it might sound check it out it's good and um don't forget of course to download the podcast it'll be available sometime on monday uh right now don't forget to stay tuned for liz kershaw that's the last thing you don't have to forget and now it's time for a bit of velvet underground i think before we uh conclude have a wonderful thanks week. for listening thanks to everybody who texted and emailed we will see you live again in a couple of weeks Take care. Love you. Bye. Bye.